again, I'm Henry T. And welcome to Be Inspired with Henry T. And I just enjoy doing this show. I love sitting here, the feeling of what goes on in these interview sessions. It gets me so fired up. And I hope it helps you lift your day up because man, it lifts me way up. And today, look out. I'm gonna go through the rafters with our guest today because he's walking inspiration. Longtime resident of Albuquerque, 28 years coaching high school kids at Santa Fe High School. He's a legend, ladies and gentlemen. He's got a story that you have to sit down and listen to. Wow, where he came from, what he accomplished, and where he's going next. Mike Lujan, longtime friend of mine, and he has done so much, and he's not done yet. How are you, Mike? Fine, thank you. I'm going to call you Coach, if that's all right. You can call because me whatever you want. Coach? Because you are the legend in our books. Well, I appreciate that. But, man, I tell you, what you've been through, where you came from, the sacrifices, literally what you had to work through. How many children in your home when you grew up? 15, 13 boys and two girls. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. If it's okay with you, can we start there with mom and dad? Yeah and how they raised you, oh, yeah. and how they motivated you, and instilled this feeling that you can be somebody. Yes, sir. What happened? Well, I, I, was, I was born in 1951. I'm the 10th child. My, I got two older sisters and, and 13 brothers, siblings, 15 in all. My dad was 100% disabled at the age of 35. You know, he, got, he got in a real uh, bad accident at work. And uh, we, we had to pull in and work and help out. I started selling newspapers at the age of in the second grade. I started wrestling for the YMCA, AAU organization, under the direction of Jack O'Neill, a mentor. Yeah. And just to let you know that my main mentor was the, the, good, the Lord. Amen. He, was, he was my mentor for everything. He gave, he gave me guidance for my mom and dad to do this and to do that, you know, because it was rough, you know, growing up. I sold newspapers there at the Bernalillo County Courthouse under the direction of a good old friend by the name of Norman Muggleston. He was a probation officer. By no means, I was not in probation. I just sold newspapers. I sold 50 papers there, starting second grade. If I made $1.50, that was a lot of money. We gave it back to our parents. I went to Kate Carson Elementary, Ernie Pyle Junior High, and of course, Rio Grande High School. And I love Rio Grande High School quite a bit. But anyway, I started wrestling, and that's what saved my life today, that, that sport. I wrestled at Ernie Pyle two years. Then I went to Rio Grande and wrestled four years at Rio Grande. I was a two-time. My sophomore year, as a matter of fact, I went undefeated, and then we had a teacher strike. Wow. I could, I could not attend a state tournament. The Albuquerque schools were out completely. Two-time state champion. No, two times third. I'll tell you why. My junior year, I wrestled 112, and I only weighed 103. The coach wanted to balance the team, so I wrestled, and I took third. My junior year, my senior year, I went undefeated. I went from 115 and I wrestled 103. He put me down to 103. I should have wrestled 112. So he flip flopped my weight class. At West Mesa High School, I'll never forget my first 10 seconds of the match. I, did, I shot a double leg tackle I, and I went off the mat and I see I don't have a. I broke my hand. I had just beat that guy three times that year. I was seated number one in state and I went, I went to state with a broken hand. And I took third that year. Wow. And I was supposed to wrestle with Ron Jacobson, and academically, I was broken. And the reason why, not blaming Rio Grande High School, it's just one of those things that academics wasn't the, the, the world for Mike Lujan. Mm -hmm. My world was to wrestle and to work and help my parents. And, you know, we we're 15, we all had to work. And it was a good blessing. It was a good thing because I won't be today where I am if my mom and dad did not give me that direction. I uh, graduated from Rio Grande High School in 1970. 
I was supposed to go to UNM. I had a scholarship there, but academically I did not qualify. I went to Trinidad State Junior College. I wrestled my first year, and then they dropped the program my second year at, at, at Trinidad Junior College. And another, another letdown. I started, I started Trinidad with a 1.3 average, but not a very good grade point average. And so I finished Trinidad with a 2.3. So I was picking up, I had a full ride to Lake Superior State and I did not go, I was afraid because, you know, cultural th things came up, I was afraid. What was I gonna do in Michigan, way over there? So I told myself, what am I gonna do, Mike Lujan? I got, a, I got into a program at Teacher Corps in Pueblo. But before I did that, that, that July the 22nd, or in July I went to Boulder and I tried out for the Olympic tryouts. And I did make the Olympic tryouts in Anoka, Minnesota in 1972. Wow. And you know what? I didn't have no scholarships. My parents couldn't afford to send me. The, the school gave me $200. So I went and I flew down there for, I think their airplane tickets were 50 bucks then. Now they're 400, probably 500. I stayed, I stayed in a fire station and slept there for three days so I could save money. In the Twin City, when I, once I flew to the Twin City, I, I, I hitchhiked down. I never been, I never been that, that far from New Mexico. So I went to Olympic trials and I wrestled and I did okay. You know, it was, it was tough. I, I, I had to train myself. I didn't have a coach. And the only training that I had was when I used to go to UNM, when Rob, Ron Jacobson used to open the room at, every night for every, any local wrestler. And that, that's why I have a lot of respect for that man. Mm -hmm. and then I had a, another mentor by the name of Arsimoni. We used to work out with me and make, run all the way to the tank from the South Valley all the way to the tank West Mesa and back. And he's been a big, big inspiration in my life in the term of wrestling because Arsimoni was the first wrestler from the South Valley that went to Adams State College and was a two two time All American or three time. You know, so those are the kind of guys that I felt was there, but. Before any of that, anything that I did at night, my parents blessed me. We all prayed together through the prayers and, and, and a lot of prayers from my mom and dad. Can you imagine my dad was only 5'1 and my mom was 4'9, 15 kids. Wow. The world that, the world that they had to, 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 to face every, every morning, you know, feeding all of us and doing this and doing that. It was, it was rough. But they had a lot of faith, and they managed, and they did very well. I have a, all my brothers and sisters did very well. You know, I have a brother by the name of Oliver that, that him and I wrestled together, in, you know, in elementary, and we, we sold papers. We did everything. As a matter of fact, my first job that I had, Henry T., my legend, the man that I respect a lot, okay. my first job was at the YMCA uh, washing dishes. I was a cook assistant, $25 an hour a week. They gave me room and board. So all this time, I was preparing for, for later on in life. So finally, I went to Southern Colorado, and I went to Teacher Corps. They paid me 70 bucks a week, and they paid for my school, and I had all tutors. Through my whole four years of college, I had tutors. I would have never made it. Uh, upper Bound, I went to Upper Bound my last two years before at Rio Grande High School when I went to Rio Grande, Upper Bound gave me a little tape recorder. I used to tape all my classes because I wasn't ready for college. I had to tape them and then go home and try to figure out everything, for, you know. That's how I started college, with a, with a tape recorder. So I went to Teacher Corps and I started my first wrestling program at Eastwood Elementary. I had another mentor, a religious lady, I mean, so awesome. She was a teacher. She was my mentor in, in uh, Southern Colorado in Teacher Corps. She used to tutor me the whole nine yards. My junior in, 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 uh, in college, they, I was in school and somebody went in to my house and stole everything in my apartment. Left me pretty much with nada, zero. She brought me in my last year. Her and her husband brought me in and, and took care of me. And she was my, she was my other mentor. I live with mentors, and most of those mentors are uh, Christian people, because that's what God wants. With a, with a mentor, 
we used to pray and, and do our homework and do everything. It, it was, so anyway, I graduated from Southern Colorado with a 3.0. Wow. So I was a psychology major. My goodness. And, uh, and, but I had a hard time. I, you know, I, I, I couldn't tell you, you know, my grade point in high school was bad. And, and you can't blame Rio Grande for that either. My father used to say, it's not the school that makes a child, but the child that makes a school. I didn't have the discipline. I, I was broken, broken com academically completely. But I still managed to do it. Incredible story. But anyway, I finally got a job. My first teaching job was at Grants, New Mexico, uh, uh, Mil Milan Elementary School. And um, I taught fourth grade there. Guess what? I learned how to teach by learning with the kids because I was in the genius teacher that, you know, to be a good teacher, you don't have to be a genius. It's all in the heart, el corazón. That's where it's all at. And God, of course, because, you know, every morning before I went to school, I spent f at least 40 minutes praying the rosary, praying to God to give me a good day with the children because that was important to me. Without, without, without that strength of the good Lord, there's nothing in this world. So I finished grants, and I applied to Santa Fe Public Schools. Mm -hmm. And that's where I met Henry T. That's where my legacy started. <laughs> I was five years an assistant coach. Wow. I started the first junior program under the direction of uh, Gilbert Muir and myself. We had, we had over 1,000 kids. I, I did that program for 33 years. I coached. I was a coach for 22 years. Then I taught my first 18 years. I taught second and third grade, bilingual. Stay right there. First half is over with. Now we go to the second half, Coach. Okay. So we got a lot more to ask you about. What a story so far. Wow. I'm fired up. I'm gonna do some jumping jacks and we're away because <laughs> I'm way up here right now. What a story Coach Luhan has. And he's got more to tell you. When we come back, right here on KZQ, Channel 32. Funding for today's programming has been brought to you in part by Malloy Dodge, Albuquerque's new and used Dodge and Ram truck dealer since 1955. I'm Nick Malloy from Malloy Dodge. For four generations, we've been serving thousands of New Mexicans from all across our fine state. Over 65 years of trust. Our family serving yours. Malloy Dodge, we're proud to stand behind our community. Thank you for supporting family programming. Funding for today's programming has been brought to you in part by Marty Sice, a local State Farm Insurance agent. I am never getting married. Never. Guaranteed. You picked a beautiful ring. Thank you. Mm. We're never having kids. Mm -mm. Ah. I love it here. We are never moving to the suburbs. We are never getting one of those. We are never having another kid. I'm pregnant. I'm never letting go. Marty Size, 345-3431. Thank you for supporting family programming. How does it feel to sit with a legend? I know the feeling. I'm sitting with one right now, longtime wrestling coach, Mike Lujan. And uh, he's in the New Mexico Wrestling Hall of Fame. His story is so compelling. How do you go from here to way up here. Pay attention, we got more coming from Coach Mike Luhan. What a pleasure having you here today, Coach. Thank you. Well, wow. you, you've been my dream for many years. But finishing my story, and then I wanna thank the whole state of New Mexico on, on your legacy, because you've done so much. Thank you. And anyway, I had a, a, a Carla Aragon, do you remember her? Yes. Before? Her husband was my principal for 16 years. He was my mentor, my, wow. my father, my daddy. 
and took me through the ranks from day one. I taught second grade nine years bilingual, and he was there <laughs> pounding on me, make sure I taught things right, and I did everything. He was my daddy. Without that man, he passed this last four, three, three months, two months ago. And uh, Carla was a good friend of mine, and, and the family was wonderful, big family also. He hired me in 1975. He was the first man in New Mexico, in, in, in northern New Mexico, that initiated the wrestling program, the Santa Fe Junior Wrestling. We had two, two teams, Agua Fria and Kearney Elementary, and he was, he was the starter of all the, of that. And, May God bless his soul, and he was great to me. Without him, I don't know if I would have made it. I don't want to interrupt your story, but you had to make an application to teach school at Santa Fe High. Mm -hmm. Take us back to those days and how you started growing your programs and growing as a teacher and a high school coach. Well, I, a teacher, I knew that how hard I had it in my elementary, in my junior high, in my high school, I used to put my whole heart and soul into teaching. And I used to tell the kids, male or female, to me they were the same. You, got, you could make it, you, you could make it. And I remember in those days, if, if, if I did multiplications and they didn't learn the, the, the six, then I make them do push-ups. And they used to get all happy. In those days you could do that. It was a love, a love of teaching. Amen. Love of teaching. And I, everything that I taught, God was first before anything. I used to tell my good Lord, give me the strength and the power to get to these kids. You know, so and then I started the elementary program. We, we started with 200 kids. By the time I retired, we had 1,000. You know? Wow. And it was a great program. A lot of kids wrestled through there. They're doing a great job now. It's still life, you know. Levi Luhan is running the show there with with the board mem with board members that they're doing a great job. It's part of the AAU organization, which I am the the executive director for AAU. But anyway, going back to the high school, I was an assistant five years, and then I became a head coach. When I came became a head coach, I used to be in that radio station. I used to call you every day, and you probably used to get mad at me and say, "Here he comes again." But I'm going to tell you, Henry T. I coached. 28 state champions. I coach out of the tw and, and I coach 13 or 14 college All Americans that came out of Santa Fe High, and I got, I had the first NCAA Division II national champion. Wow, Jason Tapia. I mean, incredible kids that did well. But that wasn't it. I used to tell my wrestlers, if you don't go to college, then you're going to go to technical school. If you don't go to technical school, then you go to armed forces. I do not accept any of my wrestlers flipping hamburgers. You gotta do something in this life. If I could make it, you can make it somewhere. Yeah. And I have a lot of kids that did very well in college, doctors, lawyers, that, that didn't wrestle. But I pushed them and pushed them. And I used to hold, from the time that they wrestled, I, I, I had a, uh, I, I kept all their records and everything and, and, and kept a file for them and make sure that they did their ACTs and the whole nine yards. So that way, there was no problems with the kids. And I used to like to get kids from the streets taken to my program. And every time I used to lose a match, I call Henry T. You inspired my program so much, you just don't know. And I'm not trying to do politics now. You, you did well for me. You're my inspirational talker, because you know how to talk. That's why I wish you were at UNM right now as a big announcer. That's my dream someday, I hope. But to, to, to go back with the whole situation, you have inspired a lot of athletics from basketball to every sport, from male to female. You, never, you have never been prejudiced, and that's why I respect you so much, Coach. I really do. I Thank respect you. you so much, and, and because of that reason. But going back to Santa Fe High, my dreams were to make champions. I never once stayed as a wrestler. I never once stayed as a coach and I was never a national champion, they dropped the program. And sometimes I tell, I ask the good Lord, why, why didn't I, I work so hard, why none of this happened? Because I think that if I would have once stayed at Rio Grande High School, I probably would have never gone to college. I already fulfilled my dream. If I would have went to Trinidad and became an All-American, I would I'd be fulfilled my dream, I would have came back to Albuquerque. What kept you going? What allowed you to pursue and never quit what pushed you? What pushed me, I was the first Luhan from all the generations that graduated from college. And I wanted to make sure that I didn't want to 
disappoint my mom and dad. I did it for my parents because I knew how hard my mom and dad worked. They worked so hard. Figure, how many kids do you have? If you have two, how hard did you work? They had 15. Wow. It, was, it wasn't an easy task. I lived there by St. Anne Church. It was hard. But the one good thing that I can say and, and, and put this with all my brothers and sisters, my parents taught us how to work. Work is a key to success. You don't have to be a genius to, to know how to be a plumber or do this or do that or, or to be a teacher. If you put your whole heart into it, things are going to happen in this life. But I put God first, I put my parents second, and then I put school third. Wow. That, that, that in order. With that, without God, he's my mentor of all the other mentors that I had. And I had a mentor, like I said, Mary Brooks. She was incredible. She took me in with her husband and and baby me. And I had Art Aragon, another one, you know, Carlos Aragon's uh, father. I mean, with, he was my father in the world of education because we all have fathers in different. I'm sure you, you had mentors too. Amen. I'm sure you did. Amen. Because we weren't born geniuses, we weren't born millionaires, we weren't born rich. As we, we put up a picture of your mom and dad right now on the screen and your family. Mom and dad, describe them in a sentence or two, and your family as well. Well, in those days, if you got in trouble in school, then you get it at home. You know, it's not like now, if you get in trouble now, they blame the parents. My mom and dad, I didn't argue with my dad, he was little. He said, did you do it right? They said, just bien, did you do it right? If you didn't do it right, then you need to figure it out why you did it wrong. And that was and my mom. My mom never told us nothing. She just said, "Anda mal, you're you're doing wrong." Right away, we, we shut up and we think. You know, we didn't argue with them. You didn't argue with parents at those days. It was the real deal. Now it's, it's a different world. I'm sorry to say that, because we need to bring the younger generation. I'm telling you out there, young, younger generation, you need to step it up because you're going to be running this country here in the next ten years. We need we need them so bad. Look at your camera and tell the parents, the young parents of today, and the kids, give them something from the heart right now. I want to tell you all, parents, thank you for being parents. And I pray to the good Lord that you, all of you are Christians, but I'm telling you, work with your child and work with your child and, and make sure that they're the future of tomorrow. And you got to live by example, because if you don't live by example, it's hard for the child to really follow the, the roots of the mom and dad. Wow. You've gone through it. You've done it the hard way. Well, You've done it the right way. You've been ethical. You're a godly man. None of this would have ever happen. I met my wife in Vermont. Without her, she's been my backbone of everything. Wow. Without her, she got hurt when she was 23 years old mm. in a car accident. She has 44 operations, and she has the biggest heart and the biggest faith of anyone I know. Without her, she supported me. If I had to go to Farmington, to New York, to Michigan to take kids, she supported me 100%. Sally, I love you, and thank you for being the best wife in the world. Wow. Describe her for us. Uh, she's a little blonde, five two. The way I met her, I went with Rick Rossetti. Do you remember Rick Rossetti? Yes. We took a team to the New England states. Forty-eight wrestlers. I met her in a bar. She don't drink, and I don't drink. And I and I got her phone number, and I got back home, and we just communicated. Wow. And three months later, I married her. I never dated her in my life. My goodness. And everybody used to say, "You're never gonna make it." But I'd be married 30, 38 years. Incredible. And very happy. She's a great How about wife. your children? I got Michael's in the Air Force. He needs five years to retire. Michaela's becoming, working hard. He wants to go back to school. He wants to be a teacher. And I got nine grandkids and one disease. Between my two kids, there I had nine grandkids. And I have a wrestler in Maine where my son is. And all my grandkids do sports and they're doing very well. You're the greatest example of happiness we've had sit here in a long time. You're a humble man, but a very happy man. But I think your greatest days are in front of you. Well, I, I hope you're right. And, I, and I, I thank God for everything. Without him, nothing would have happened. 
When I used to travel to Santa Fe, every, for 25 years I traveled to Santa Fe, I prayed a whole rosary all the way over there and back to, to ask God, give me a good day with my children because they're the future. In the end of the day, it's not us, they're the future. You're one of the highlights of my broadcast career, watching you develop the way you are, developing athletes, giving them yourself, sacrificing, and never ending selling them to the public, to New Mexico. Calling me, you were relentless, getting my attention. Henry, I have a story for you. Oh, that's love for what you do and for those you serve. But you gotta remember, Henry, you know what the word calling is? You're the calling of God for broadcasting and, and motivating people, motivating kids. I was supposed to be a teacher. To, till today, I don't know how I did it, but that was my calling. And everybody has a calling, and that's the way I feel. And do your best in your calling. I never smoked or drank in my life. They used to say, coaches used to tell me, come on, coach, let's go have a beer. Wow. See, my kids, if I have to tell my kids not to drink, why should I drink? Well, I, I thank you for being here today. You bet. And you've inspired me to go after my goals. And like you, I'm looking at my greatest days in front of me because I have motivational people around me, inspirational people like Coach Mike Lujan. Look out. Maybe I will be the broadcaster again at UNM. Well, thanks to your inspiration. Well, I hope so. They, they got to look at you, man. <laughs> we got to make phone calls. I will. Make them. They might help. Coach, thank you. Thank you, Coach. Uh, you're, you're awesome, man. You are too, Coach. We'll see you tomorrow morning right here, 8 o'clock on KZQ Channel 32. You got a story. Don't forget to call me with it. 907-4523 or email originalgameface at gmail.com It's been great talking with you today right here on KZQ. Remember, we're on every morning right here. Be inspired with Henry T. 8 o'clock on KZQ Channel 32.